Okay, good evening, everybody. And uh, here we are at the, our regular council meeting. And before we, we, go, we get into the meeting, I would like to ask all of you to participate in a moment of silence in respect for the uh, 215 children who were found buried near the former Kamloops Indian Residential School in BC. Our hearts and our thoughts are with the families and with the, the, our First Nation brothers and sisters who have endured and continue to endure such a tragic event. So I would ask you all please to uh, observe a moment of silence in respect of, of uh, this incident. Thank you very much. So we will now call the meeting to order. There's an agenda. You all have an agenda. Is there any additions or omissions to the agenda that anybody wants to bring up? Seeing no hands, or I will ask for a motion to approve the agenda as, as uh, presented. Moved by, moved by uh, Deputy Warden Albright and seconded by Councillor Dickman. All in favor signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. Conflict of interest declaration. If anybody has a conflict of interest that they would like to declare, they can declare it now. Or if they come upon a, a, an item as we go, they can, it can be declared at that moment. So if anybody has anything they want to declare, they can, they can now or, or wait till then, so. And I don't see anybody even moving on that. We don't have a presentation tonight. We have the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting, which was held on May, 20, on May the 25th. And uh, are there any questions or omissions or anything on that that anybody wants to bring up? If not, we need... Uh, uh, a motion to, we need a motion to uh, uh, approve them. And Deputy Warden, you have your hand up. Yeah, you I have. just had a couple of little things, just some housekeeping things. Um, so under agenda, it says on a motion by Calvin Dottermo and seconded by Nicole Albright, the agenda was approved as circulated. I was chairing the meeting, so I, I couldn't have seconded that. And there was another spot under, Community Hall, Capital, Capital Grants. It says that it was moved by uh, Councillor Surrett and seconded by me as well. So just two little housekeeping things there that I just wanted to clear up. Okay, I'm sure that can be, uh, I'm sure that Eli can, can look after that. Um, I'm not sure who the seconder was, but uh, if there was any recordings or anything, I'm sure that you can she can find that. So now we need a motion to approve the minutes. Moved by Councillor Digden, seconded by Councillor Bohr. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Did you have a question, Glenn? No, that was the only thing I was going to approve as corrected. As corrected. That's yes. all. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we voted. Uh, opposed? Carried. I don't see any business arising. We have councillor's reports. Does any, any councillor want to give a report? We can just go ahead and, okay. Deputy Warden. Okay. Um. Lots and lots of meetings. I'll make this as quick as I can. So I've attended many of the same meetings as are in the uh, warden's report. 
Um, a couple I want to point out. So regular council meetings, committee of the whole, we met with Minister uh, McGuire, who is the Minister of Municipal Affairs. We talked about drought relief. That was one of the topics. And they're looking into making a more permanent solution rather than just a short term solution. They're trying to they're, they're looking to work with us to come up with a, a long-term solution for our residents. They're realizing that it is an issue. They're gonna be working with EMO and, and trying to come up with something for our residents that will be much more effective than what we're doing right now. Um, met with the Argyle Recreation Commission. Uh, a few, few things I wanna mention, especially for people who are watching, day camp is going to be a go, just so people are aware. It's going to start July 5th and run till August 19th. Pumnico, Belleville, and Plymouth. Registration is going to be online uh, this year, and they will own, they're going to start by taking 15 kids, and hopefully when the next phase of restrictions opens up, they're going to move to, to more kids, but for now, they're going to start with 15. So it hasn't opened yet. Registration, it'll be on social media. Soccer is slated to start June 21st for eight weeks. And baseball is potentially going to start on June 21st. So those are, those are some of our regular summer programs that parents have been, I know they've been contacting me asking if they're happening and they are happening just a little differently than before, but keep your eyes open for that. Um, uh, lots of Mariner Center steering committee meetings. We're meeting on a weekly basis. So um, I'll give you a quick update, I guess kind of a, a summary of, of what's happened in the last few meetings because like I said we've met we've met weekly since in the last month or so um, so as you're aware there's been a restructuring of the committees so there's no longer those two little subcommittees that we had before it's all one big steering committee now um, I'm the chair of that subcommittee and Deputy Mayor Steve Barry is the vice chair of the committee um, we've engaged Mark Brophy the town engineer to work with EXP to get the application process started and things are moving at the speed of light. They're going really fast. There's been a lot of progress in the last few weeks, more than we've seen in a long time. And that's in part due to the fact that the three units are working really, really well together. We're, we're, all of us are contributing. We had our meeting with Max Chauvin where most of us participated. We came up with a funding number for that project. We came up with percentages after a lot of deliberations. And then as soon as we had all that, Mark Brophy was able to work with EXP and get things moving. So they're progressing, EXP is progressing really, really well. They have a first draft of the text for the application. Um, it's been passed on to the CAOs. The CAOs are reviewing that text and they're going to have it prepared, uh, their kind of comments on it for the steering committee meeting tomorrow. Um, they may share it with us and ask for feedback from us as well. The revised concept floor plan will be presented tomorrow at the steering committee. So that's a piece that we've been waiting for for a long time. We're going to see a revised floor plan for what the Mariner Center could potentially look like. Remember, it's probably not going to finish looking like that, but at least it's, it's a step in the right direction as to what it could potentially look like. Um, one thing that we are looking for for this project, so the text because of the nature of the, the application, there's a lot of information that needs to go in the writing of the application. And one of the pieces is letters of support. So we're asking community groups to send in letters of support so we can add to the application. And we don't just need letters of support from community groups. We're also asking residents, residents who support this project to send in letters of support. And tomorrow we're gonna to discuss at the steering committee meeting. There's a template that Frank Grant has shared with us of what a letter of support could look like. Um, so it's something that we can talk about tomorrow. And if we feel that it's, it's a good fit, we can hold on to that. And if residents want a copy of it, they can use that so that we can have as many letters attached to our application as possible. Um, the goal is, um, in talking with Mark Brophy, so to have 99% of the document, including the floor plans and renderings and estimates to the steering committee by June 16th. So all of that, has been going on in the background. I know a lot of you don't, you know, always know what's happening, but all of that has been happening. Like I said, it's going really, really fast. Um, and once we have that underway, the, the next move, the focus will be for the online application. They've come up, Duram at the Mariner Center has been very beneficial as well in helping Mark come up with a timeline of, they have really, strict deadlines this has to be done on this bit by this week by this week, and they're really sticking to it so things are moving fast thank you sorry that was really long
Okay, it was a lot of good information for sure. Information that that the public needs to know as well. You know, it's it's very very good that they know that we're that we're moving along with this. Anybody else have a report? Councillor Dick, Councillor Dick, and did you? I see you you took your mute off. You have you have one? Okay, go ahead. Uh, just thank you. You're right on, Adalia. Um, just uh, been doing a few things out in the community and that, which I'll tell you right now with the COVID, I've, I've found it very hard as a counselor. Um, as a lot of you know, I try and be around a lot of the municipality whenever I can at public functions and stuff that's going on. And because of COVID, there hasn't been much going on there. So it's hard. It's hard on people. It's hard all over. It's hard on counselors. Uh, working with some... Uh, with some individuals in the uh, community for a new uh, sign, Le Sartre de Pumpku, and I ordered that sign today on behalf of the people I'm working with, and uh, hopefully start getting it, uh, hopefully it'll be up within the next couple of uh, weeks or so while goes good, and uh, just trying to um help out a few people in the community when I get calls and that and uh, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Council board. Thank you, Warden. Um I attended um uh, regular meetings, uh Yarm Industrial Commission meeting. I've attended a couple of audit meetings with the um, audit committee for the library. That's very interesting. We had a uh, met with RBC representative for investments. And then we had another audit committee uh, to meet with the, um, the accountants, uh, White, White and Perkins. Um, to follow up on the um, recreation committee, um, we have uh, walking groups that are gonna begin. They're looking for champions in each community um, to have uh, maybe a like, walking group starting once a week or something like that to get the people motivated to go out. So they're looking for champions in each community. So if you know of anyone, uh, please call Scott. Um, and I guess we. Met, I also met with the Minister McGuire of Municipal Affairs as well. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Councillor Boudreaux. You're muted, Councillor. <laughs> Gordon, you're muted. <laughs> I just got a little story to tell you. I, I got a, an email today from a fifth grader and wondering what I was going to do, what we were going to do about the old Wedgeport school. So um, I went to the school and I talked to the fifth grader today and very, very intelligent. And he had a few ideas and I just just don't want to go into details, but pretty, uh, pretty impressed with the uh, fifth grader. And I also attended a lot of meetings. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Councillor Sonia. Thank you, Warden. Um, I'm glad to say that uh, work has begun on the Comos Hill Wharf. I attended the same meeting that Kathy did with recreation, and I, I may have a champion for the walk down here in Plymouth and area. I also attended the accessibility, which they will have a presentation or you've probably read it already. It's pretty, pretty uh, uh, complete. Uh, that's about it, except I want to say how glad I am to see geese sitting up again. So thank you. That's, that's for sure. It's not just didn't expect him to attend tonight. So it's very, very glad that you were able to be for sure for Council's rec. Uh, anybody else? Councillor Dartemont. Well, thank you, Warden. I uh, just want to give you guys an update on uh, some of the activities in, in the ASTA, um, Yarmouth Cane Shores Tourism Association. Uh, the senior games are scheduled for September 16th to 18th. Uh, I'm not there yet, but there's probably a few of you on the uh, on, on council that might be able to participate. Uh, we're hoping that everything, uh, you know, according to all the COVID rules and regulations, that that can go ahead. Um, another exciting uh, thing happening next year, uh, June of 2022, 
is the Travel Writers uh, Conference. Uh, that's a bunch of travel writers from all over Canada. And they're coming to Yarmouth and Canadian Shores uh, and the area, not just Yarmouth and Canadian Shores, but in, in this end of the province. And uh, so we'll have a lot of uh, some good press. Uh, and that's always, you know, these people write, uh, you know, go, go around the community, uh, experience some of the things that are here and write about it. And then they're featured in magazines and newspapers. And I think it's, uh, it's actually great timing because uh, the, with the Congress coming two years later, uh, it'll be great to have all those stories and to, you know, by then, hopefully people will be able to travel and want to travel and uh, it'll bring them to our end of the province here. Thank you. Thank you. So that completes, because I don't believe Guy, you don't have, or Councillor Stretch, you don't have a report to help. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Next is the warden's report. It's a written. It's written. It's in. It's uh, there's a copy. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I guess all I all I do is just uh, list the, the the meetings and whatever I've attended, and maybe I should give a little bit more detail on some of the meetings. But I feel there's enough to read that I don't know if I want to give anybody else any more to read about reports. So anyway, but I. I any questions I can, I can answer questions. The next is a staff report, and I'll pass that over to our CAO. Thank you, Warden. Uh, can you hear me okay, by the way? Yes. All right. Um, I got a, a mic because Guy didn't like my, he didn't like my old one. So uh, I'm going to call this the Guy mic, uh, <laughs> the Councillor Surrett mic uh, when we're in meetings, but off meeting will be the Guy mic. Uh, so the uh, so just a quick update on the municipal building. We are very very close to closing in on that. Substan I've not received the substantial completion certificate from the architect as of yet. I expect that to happen in days. The plan still remains that we will be moving in starting on the twenty fourth of June. I think the staff report said may have said July somewhere. That's an error. June is the is the is the starting of the move. So we're starting on that Thursday. So Thursday, starting in the afternoon, uh, we'll be closing office. Friday, all day will be closed. Um, I would also just uh, be mindful that prior to the 24th, uh, if everything goes well, our operations is, is we're not gonna be able to respond as quickly to incoming um, concerns because uh, we're obviously we're coordinating a move. So it's, a, it's, a, it's you know, the, we are engaging movers, but we do have our own responsibilities to move as well. So uh, essentially the, uh, every day is different. Every day that I go into the office now, significant changes are made. Um, they are rushing to meet the deadline that we've imposed. The deadline uh, is imposed because of the movers. There's only a short period of time that they can do their work. So they'll start on the 24 and they'll be done by 26, which is the Saturday. Uh, some staff will remain and work over the weekend to make sure things are operational. And we expect to open to the public for operations on the 28th of June. Now, um, that doesn't mean that all of the construction will be completed. There'll be some little things that, that, that need to have happen but we fully expect that, you know, mechanical, electrical, heating, everything is going to be in working order, uh, internet, et cetera. So um, that's our expectation. Uh, we obviously, as with anything, you always have hiccups and uh, we're, we're not immune to those. We have them. And uh, so we're trying to work them through as, as best as possible. Um, so uh, it's exciting. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of excitement going on and, and people are asking when we move in, when we move in, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a great day when we're able to move in. And, and so of course the next step is, is this building and what we have to do with this building. You've instructed uh, staff that you want it sold. And so there's a variety, variety of ways that that can be done. Uh, I'm not, I haven't initiated that work just yet because I'm not sure with the move, what's going to be left behind. And there's still some unanswered questions. So I don't, want to necessarily put it to market immediately plus you want to you want to prepare it before it's just like selling a house you want to prep it you want to make it look nice uh if you're going to put it out to market so there's that piece as well so there's a lot of there's like a thousand little little tiny things that we got to do so uh so that's ongoing we're quite excited 
um, uh, for the move. And so the moving company is Thompson's out of the Valley. So they'll be doing the move for us. Um, affordable and alternative housing, not a significant amount to update you on. I'm still expecting a written report from planning, um, which has been reminded. So we'll, we'll see uh, how quickly that gets done. Uh, COVID protocols, just quickly in, in the report for your, uh, for your review, um, an update on our communication uh, regarding safety and security of our communities, regarding potential fishing disputes. So there's a slight update there. Uh, uh, rural internet is, is, there's nothing to report yet. Um, I haven't seen too much action in the communities. You may have as counselors seen some activity. Uh, I haven't been made aware of that just yet. And I'm not sure exactly where they're going to go first. We still don't have that information. Um, but they're supposed to be done by next year at this time, entirely done. So lots is going to happen in the next uh, next 12 months uh, for rural internet. Uh, the Mariner Center, I think that I would be repeating a lot of what Deputy Warden uh, Albright said. So I'm not going to speak on the details of that. Uh, the airport Corporation had a meeting and they um, they had a presentation from David Morgan from Celtic Air. So they were uh, updated or may, are updated on their work. Um, uh, there is quite a bit of policy work happening. We have RFPs going out for janitorial services and other things of that nature that you should be aware of. Um, they won't be tendered because it, it'll be below the, the tender threshold, but we'll be approaching multiple companies to see what their interest is to, to do that. Um, there's ongoing work that will be done on JE Hatfield Court, as you know. Uh, we will be extending the pave, we'll be doubling the pave uh, in certain areas, uh, putting a, a second coat um, in the higher volume areas. And then the painting of the parking spots will occur in late June, early July. So that, that second paving is, is set to happen on the on the 28th of, of, of July, of June, sorry. So there'll be on our first day of opening, there'll be some some construction happening outside. So it is again, it's 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 tight, uh, but it's necessary. Uh, perhaps uh, that can be done earlier uh, in order to accommodate the move in, but there there will be moving parts still at, um, in the construction. Um, there has have been a number of meetings surrounding Western Wren work. I would invite you to read through some of that. Some of you were involved with the residential efficiency project that would have been fairly recent. We just met last week to talk about that. Um, essentially, the Wren has in their in their priorities to deal with um, the grid. So, so Nova Scotia Power has limited capacity on its grid. So there's two ways that we can address that. One is to increase the grid capacity, and, but that's a Nova Scotia power thing. And they may or may not be motivated to do that. Uh, the other option is to reduce the energy consumption in this area in order to allow for more things to happen within the grid. So the REN is doing both. They're, they're, they are actively approaching uh, different projects and they have engaged a third party to take a look at some energy conservation measures that can be done both at the commercial and at the residential level. So I know that the warden was involved with a meeting um, regarding uh, the potential for a bioheating option for Mariner Center. That is one, and, and council did approve uh, an application uh, to that effect, knowing it wasn't gonna cost you any money just yet. Um, so that's one project. So what I'm referring to is a residential efficiency project. That's another project separate. And that information will be brought to you at a time that's ready. Um, I helped the REN executive with their draft audited financial statements as we assist with, with uh, reporting and monitoring for the REN. Uh, drought and Remo were, were ongoing work there. Remo has done some presentations on drought, on how to address drought situation. Um, we have said this a mul multitude of times, the best solution is an on-site solution, but we're also learning that the well drillers are behind in their work. So it's, it's, uh, we have to keep that in mind as, as uh, you know, there's a capacity problem uh, regarding the ability to actually drill, drill wells. Um, digging, I think there's a little bit like a, a dug well, I think there's a bit more, uh, it's a bit faster, but, but the drilled well, there is a waiting list 
Um, we have had rain, but we're still in our minds behind on our water tables. Um, there's a variety of other projects going on and, um, and they all seem to be happening at the same time. I can, I can announce gladly and happily that the Trident dewatering system is fully operational, effective this morning. Um, and they are um, literally squeezing away uh, at the dewatering uh, process. And so that is a great uh, addition to the West Pubnico community uh, because we will not be using the, uh, the outdoor uh, bags at all. Um, there, there is a plan to use the outdoors for a different function, but not for this function. So um, the solids will be carted away and the, and the, and the not so solids will, will be recycled through the system. There are, it will enable us to get other repairs done um, that treat, treatment plant is now 10 years old and is showing wear. So Louis and Vaughn and his team are leading in that area and we seem to have things that are starting to fail because they fail after about 10 years. So, um, so our maintenance crew is, is on top of that. Uh, East Pubnico is happening at, at exactly the same time as well as, as the uh, storage facility behind our office is also happening at the same time. So our maintenance people are over, overworked currently um, trying to <laughs> trying to uh, push some of the projects ahead so that we can finish some uh, some of these but the trident is a big one and that one's completed um, East Pumnico will be is next uh, in terms of priority um, so uh, there's uh, audit seasons coming upon us and uh, obviously the tax bills are out so they've been um, so we've been receiving quite a few calls and collections um, so uh, we're 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 running we're running pretty solid right now. Um, IT from an IT perspective, um, there's a lot of planning going on for the move. Um, so Scott is is instrumental in that, and making sure that that you know our 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 uh, our network and our server and everything works when we move over. And I don't know that I, I'm sure that you're aware of it, but I just wanted to remind Council that we are using a voice over internet protocol system now for phones. Which is which requires internet, so there'll be no phone lines, but there'll be internet lines um, required. So internet is key, obviously, for our building. Um, and I could go on and on, but I think I'll stop there. And if there's any questions specific to things that I didn't talk about or or things that I did talk about, um, I'll do my best to answer. Anybody have any questions, uh, Councilor Gautam? This might be premature. It might be putting the cart in front of the horse, but uh, you know, this uh, we've been waiting for this building for quite a long time. So, uh, once uh, we're settled in and moved in, is there any plans for a grand opening? Or? Yes, um, through you, Warden. Um, we're we're looking at September, uh, and it, it may even be a little later than that. Um, you know, we don't we want to iron out a lot of different things, and and our priority. There are some things that we want in that building that we haven't prioritized right now. Things of an artistic nature or of a celebratory nature, like plaques to honor this person or that. You know, we have we have a, a plan that we will be presenting to council for your for your endorsement. Tip, but I'd say we're looking at late September at this point for a grand opening. Um, you know, we'll invite dignitaries and 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 communities, et cetera. So yes, is the long answer to your short question. Uh, and, and also, um, there is a plan to reach out to some of our Acadian and First Nation uh, uh, organizations to, to look at, you know, the, the artistic additions that are needed. And just like anything else, when you, when you walk into a new building, there's a, there's a ton of things you don't expect. So the first, the first priority is going to be functionality. And then, and then after that, we'll get into some of the details of, of um, the look and, and honoring. Uh, certain individuals. Um, and I, I guess by honoring, I'll, I guess I'll let you in on it. Like, so obviously we usually have a plaque, you know, the council actually like says, you know, it's open on this day and date and the warden usually is honored uh, on, a, on a plaque of that nature. But we also need to consider the fact that there was a property, there was a, a significant piece of land that was donated. Mm -hmm. So we're planning on honoring those that donated that land in the building as well. 
Um, so I'll, I'll look to you for advice on that as well. I will set up something, but I'll look to you for advice to try to, how to do that professionally. One more question. Um, I think we had talked about uh, the, the council chambers uh, and maybe naming it or giving it a name. Have we, have we, I don't think we've got there yet, have we? We did. Uh, we ended up calling it the Argyle room. Okay, right. Okay. Yeah. Because we were geographically naming every room and uh, we had two or three options and everybody seemed to land on Argyle. Yeah. We, we called it, I think we had like Argyle room and then we had uh, council chambers and then we had the great hall and we had the compass room. Those were the four. Right, and right. Yeah. And we ended up- Thank you for, for reminding me. Thank you. Well, you may have been occupied at the time, sir. Mm -hmm. Councilor Surratt. Uh, Alain, I don't know if I've had this question before, but uh, I've had probably three people, only three, it's not a whole lot, and they wondered why we didn't put Jack Hatfield uh, Court or instead of J.E. Hatfield. A lot of people, were, well, not a lot of people, three people were asked, who is J.E. Hatfield? And when I said it was uh, a gentleman that died in the Second World War, ah, uh, if you had put Jack, we wouldn't know. But probably the protocol is to put J.E., is it? Right. I mean, that's that would be the name that was given to us by historians. I mean, I think you're right. It would have been Jack Hatfield. I, that that's a possibility. Um, uh, uh, for for whatever reason, um, you know, when we looked at the historical documents and other things, um, the recommendation came as J. E. Hatfield. Um, you know, you're you're quite right. It could have easily have been have been Jack uh, put in the name. And I mean, road names can be changed uh, if it's a significant uh, concern of council, and that certainly can happen. No, like I said, there was only other three people. And one yeah. person, when I said Jack, uh, this person said right away, oh yeah, I know who that is. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no problem. Anybody else have any questions or comments? So, okay, uh, we'll, we'll move on. Sorry, just, just one other thing. If it, I, I just got a reminder from Ailey, I think yes. you may all receive that. Is, is that there, there a newsletter for the building, the history of the building alongside the story of J.E. Hatfield, for instance, and all of those uh, stories will be released uh, uh, via newsletter, bilingual newsletter. This particular newsletter, because it has to do with the building, will be distributed to every household. So this was this is not just simply an e-newsletter. E this was one that we specifically said, okay, we need to give people a copy. So right. we've done that. So that perhaps might um, might help the residents understand the history and, and some of the reasons why uh, we did what we did. Okay, thank you for that. So we'll move on. And we are at number nine, which is for decision. And the first one is proclamation there and uh, proclamation for recreation and parks month. Apparently June is recreation and parks month. And uh, we just want to uh, get the municipality of Argyle to proclaim the month of June to be recreation and parks month. So I guess uh, we would need a motion to do that. And Wondering if there's any any comments or questions on this. If if there isn't, we can well we can always have a motion and and discuss it later anyway after. So, okay, um, moved by Councillor Sonia, or was that a question? I moved and seconded by Councillor Bork. So, is there any discussion or quest or questions on on this? Uh, seeing none. All in favor. Signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. The next one is a sewer. It's, it's an application, let me go back here. It's a, it's a connection, a sport for, for West Public res, resident. And there's, there's a, a couple of uh, attachments here. And what this is, it's a property back in 1977 when the original it showed on the plan that there was a, a, 
a lateral going to, to across the road to the property. And at the time, the person did not, they, they didn't want to be to, to uh, get hooked up because they had a good system. Well, now, and the owners, it's still the same owner as back then, decided that he wanted to get hooked up. So they, they came and they started looking for this, for this lateral, they started looking for the connections. It's not there, it was never put in. So because it's not the fault of the, uh, of the owner, it was missed. It was missed by, for, for, for whatever reason, it, it was missed. So what we're looking at now, there's estimated costs is five to $6,000 because they got across the road. And that, that involves a little bit more work and, and permits from the department of, uh, from TIR. So I guess the recommendation is that because it's of no fault of the, uh, of the owner that that was missed, that that the municipality take the uh, or, or assume the responsibility and assume the cost for going across the road and and or not just going across the road but uh, uh, getting the uh, lateral to the property so I guess the the motion would be that a maximum commitment of 5,000 and work will be done will be administered by public work staff. So is there any questions or comments on this? Go ahead, uh, Councillor Surratt. Uh, maybe Calvin can help me on this. Maybe not, if not, what do I want to? Uh, Calvin, uh, when the, the sewers and that were built, were, would these people have been approached to connect? at that time, would they have been ob obligated to connect it? Did they say no or, or you don't really know that answer? Uh, I, I think that people were asked, everybody was asked to, uh, to connect, but uh, depending on circumstances, uh, people connected, people didn't connect, maybe you, you just had made a, a brand new on-site sewer, right? So uh, I, I don't think uh, there was, you know, nobody got their arms twisted or anything like that, so. Uh, but but I believe that the laterals were were installed to the properties, whether they want to in case, especially the ones that were going across the road. Right? Yeah, there were supposed to be laterals to all the properties that were so close, yes. so much you know, hundred fifty feet from the from the from the road. But uh, I don't think that's the only lateral that was missed in the uh, Probably system. Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> yeah. So with that, I think I think it's only fair that that this uh, property owner doesn't have to assume the uh, the cost, the total cost of this. And yeah. so, so I mean, a maximum of, of five thousand. If it goes over, I guess that would mean that the the property owner would have to uh, assume the rest of the remainder of the cost, whatever goes over five thousand. But it should be it shouldn't be much more than that, for sure. And, and I think, I don't know if you, uh, Mr. Warden, if you mentioned that the municipality would pay the bill, but I think the money would probably come out of the West Palm Eco Sewer Committee. Is that correct, uh, yes. Muse? Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. So, exactly. Yeah. That's great. So I'm willing, to make, I'm, I'm willing to make that a motion. Okay. Uh, okay. It's been moved by Councillor Dodgeball, seconded by Councillor Board. Did you have a question? I saw your hand up before. Did you have a comment or questions on that? I was just gonna make the motion and oh, okay. I was gonna ask the same question. Uh, how many more have been missed to that? Yeah. There's laterals that have been connect that were supposed to be uh, put and they're not. So I don't know. There's no yeah. way of knowing that until you, you want to connect someone, that's all. Yeah, so I I'll second if, the motion. Yeah, I don't know if we know that or, or, or not. No. Dale Muse maybe can answer that. Well, I can, I can, I can speak to the fact that when that project was was done and back in the day, um, first of all, rules and regulations were much different, and the operation of that uh, sewer system is, was not really managed in the way that it's managed now by by the municipality. Uh, back in when Laura Lee Doucette was our uh, public works uh, director, of public works, she 
as well as a, a student did an audit of the laterals to see which ones are in the as built and compare them to the connections. And they found quite a few who not only were connected, but they were using the, the sewer and hadn't been built. So we, that was probably, you know, that's, that's going on 14, 13, 14 years ago. Um, so those were rectified. We know that there were laterals installed without our permission or consent. Um, and that would have just happened at a time where the regulations were different than they are now. So I'm not pointing any fingers in terms of like, it was just, you know, somebody needed a lateral, put a lateral, like that was it. So, so there were, there was some of that stuff happening as well. So we did our best to reconcile, but I can assure you that there will be some that, that we think are there that are not, we have seen them and, uh, we hope that these are the last ones, but we're not particularly confident that they, uh, that there'll be all of them, but we, we did, we did have a project where we try to identify okay. uh, those pieces. Yeah, I'm so bored. Um, in the, in the history, uh, it says uh, we are estimating the cost to be around five to $6,000. And in the motion, we say that the commitment's up to $5,000. What if it costs more? What happens there? The suggested motion would limit your municipal responsibility to $5,000. If you, so if it costs more, is the resident going to pay the, that the amount? Resident would, the resident would be responsible for the difference. So does that resident know that? Because I, 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 it was understood that we would that we would put in the lateral, and then she would put, that the resident would uh, pay the connection from from her house to the to the lateral. Yes, so I'm not, I can't answer you whether or not the Director of Public Works advised the resident of that decision um, okay. to, to limit to 5,000. I, I can't, I can't uh, answer that question accurately without him, but um, I know that there was communication with, with the homeowner in this regard, quite a, quite a bit of communication. Uh, if council does not want to, if council wants to make a different decision, then it can certainly do so and say, and change the motion to the effect that it does not want to pass any cost to the resident. Um, um, I thought that the public works recommendation to limit to five was was not unreasonable, and I, I think it can probably done for that be done for that. But you're quite right in raising that it does put some risk on the homeowner. I know the homeowner is is no as aware that she once the lateral is across the road she she the per, she's supposed to she's going to pay for the connection but she was asking that it would be it wouldn't cost her anything to to uh, come across the road that's that's the thing. Okay, uh, Councilor Dixon. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mr. Warden. I uh, I honestly we've had this incident happened a few times over the last couple of years with lead rules that are supposed to have been put in that were never put in um why we don't know and uh but at the same time if that lead rule that should have been put in was in at the time this homeowner would not have to pay uh any monies to have uh to be connected to this uh this setup um this lady is an elderly lady that owns the home. Uh, she's on fixed income. Uh, she's trying to improve uh, her home and improve the sewer system that uh, that she presently has right now. I would have personally liked to have seen uh, no charge go to this individual at all and to be hooked up to, to the sewer system myself. If, if I may, um... There, there's always a cost for connection though. Like, like even though if, if the lat rule was there, she would have to pay the connection charge as far as I know. Is, am I correct in saying that? Yes. You know, there yes. is a connection charge for anybody who connects to it. it we, we, the, the municipality would bring the lat rule to the property, is that correct, I do believe. And then it was the, the connection itself to the home, there was always a charge for that, for anybody. No. Correct. The homeowner responsibility is to bring it from the lateral to the home. To the home. And there may be a connection fee in addition to that to connect to the system, depending on the situation. Right. 
So the motion as it stands right now and seconded would not meet Councillor Digden's expectation, just so that we're all clear. Right. So if, if we want to, I mean, there's, there's no scenario where the homeowner pays zero, but under this motion, there's the risk that they would pay to bring it to their house as well as an additional cost for the lateral uh, work. So that, that's where the motion stands uh, at this time. Any more, uh, Councillor Dignan? Or you... um, I, again, like I was saying, other than the connection fee itself, which has to be, you know, everyone has to pay, I would have much rather see no fee as far as being associated with this myself. But personally, I did not make the motion, so I can't say anything on the motion right now. Thank you. But what you're saying is there shouldn't be any 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 charge to the homeowner for bringing it to her property, which is what we we would have done. That's that's, that's your that's exactly that's what you're what, saying. Now. That's exactly okay. what I'm saying because somewhere along the line, uh, quite a few of these laterals have been missed along the way in in this system. So why I don't know, and I don't think we we'll may we'll never know. But anyway it's it is what it is if it was done the way it was had been planned out to do uh the system would already have, the lead will, would already have been across the road and her able to hook into it yes exactly thank you councillor Surrett, you had your hand up and then councillor Dawkins. councillor Surrett, did you have your hand up sorry about that yes uh i totally agree with kathy and uh, uh councillor digden both of them, uh, they're absolutely right. Uh, it should have been should have been done before, and uh, yes, you should go across the road, and the uh, the homeowner shouldn't be. That's what I want to add on. Thank you, Councilor Councilor Dodge. Okay, just so to be clear, uh, uh, once once uh, we get the lateral across the road, uh, it, it, it's on the uh, the homeowner's property. Uh, then there's the thousand dollar connection fee, and then of course. Uh, you have to pay for the rest of the piping to your house, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That, that is my understanding. Yeah. 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 So she still has to pay, or he still has to pay the uh, the thousand dollar connection fee, like everybody else, correct? Yeah. Correct, because the person did not ever hook up, and yeah. while the lateral, if the lateral would have been there, there would have been a hookup fee. There would have been no cost to us to bring the lateral. Clearly. And a hookup fee of about twelve hundred and eleven dollars, and the person would have been responsible to bring it to their home, and 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 I would not recommend against. I would recommend maintaining that cost because that's that's what the bylaw says and 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 says. So uh, really, we'd be we'd be going against the bylaw in that in that instance. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm I'm willing to change uh, change my motion to. I guess we said from five to 6,000, but I guess for whatever it costs, uh, is that dangerous? Uh, how about if it costs 10 grand? So you don't know when you're starting to cross the road, you, you know, <clears throat> but. Yeah. Well, it, it's unlikely that the difference be, that it, that would be a 10, it would be 10 grand. I mean, I think, you know, the experience that we have and the people that we've done, that have done this in the past, four to six should be, a, a fair estimate. Um, you know, uh, I don't envision too many complications in a, in a job like that. Uh, but I mean, if you're saying that we'll pay for the whole thing, then what you're essentially saying is we will bear the entire risk of that project. Um, and if that's the will of council, then that's, that's what we'll do. Yeah. And, and we're here, uh, you know, on live, uh, zoom and on Facebook talking about it, uh, I guess we could have potential contractors watching this and, you know, but anyway, kind of a open can of worms. Possibly. I mean, I don't, I think that, you know, we would have gotten those estimates from them anyway. So I don't think okay. it's. All right. Yeah. These so I'll figures... change my motion to, uh, I guess we bear the cost of getting the lateral from, uh, I guess, from the. The manhole. Yeah. What, or, or the or the line who's on the other side of the road across the road to this uh, 
person's of the property owner. Yeah. And, and if I the secondary wants to agree. Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. So the, the motion is amended to cover the cost of bringing, bringing the lateral to the, this person's property, basically at a cost of, at, at no cost to the homeowner. That's how I, that's how I see it. Okay, any questions? I see Councillor Sonia. So basically here we're agreeing on any future increase in pricing, no matter how far we go. Is that it with this motion? It's, in other words, 15 years from now, uh, are we still, we will still be bound to that motion, right? Well, we would be bound. I'll tell you why we're bound. It's because it's something that was supposed to have been done, right? If, if this, if this uh, project has been, had been done the way it was, it was supposed to have been done, there would be a lateral at this person's property. And if there's others that have no, that have no uh, uh, lateral to their properties, it's, not, it's none of their, it, it, it's still something that should be there, right? Um, would we be bound? We would be bound, I think, regardless of the motion or not, because I think we have to, you know, I mean, the, the thing is you have to bring the, the, uh, the lateral to people's properties. That, that's, that's part of the sewer system. Every property was supposed to have a lateral ready. Didn't mean they had to connect, but it was there ready. I see CAO Muse had. So under normal circumstances, when the lateral is to a person's property and they're not connected, they would have been charged a $20 connection fee. Um, not, not because they're using the lateral, but in, in many instances, there were laterals that went into vacant lots. And so those individuals, even if they weren't connected, would have paid an annual fee. When I refer to laterals not being installed, et cetera, I don't want to, there's, there's two things that happened there. And I, I just want to clarify. One of the things that happened was that people actually were on the sewer and were not billed appropriately. So that's like that. So, and then, but what we're dealing with here, here is the opposite where, where, where the as built said, that there was a lateral, but then when we went and looked for it, it wasn't there. So that happens less often than what I was referring to. So I don't wanna leave the impression that we had like these like dozens and hundreds of connections that nobody was paying. Like that's not, that's not the reality. Like, so there are, yes, there are laterals that look, that appear on as built, but because of construction inspection was missed or whatever the case may be, the lateral itself does not is not where it's supposed to be or does not exist at all. There are instances of those, but they are, there's not a ton of them, okay? Because if there were, you know, we would hear about it before now, right? I mean, people just, you know, this sewer either works or it doesn't and the lateral is helpful uh, for that to work. So I just want to clarify that. There's probably not a whole lot of properties in the West Public area where the sewer goes by that is not connected at this point. You know, there's probably some, but there's probably not, a whole lot that are not connected. Uh, I'm just assuming. I uh, I don't know that for a fact, but uh, no, sir, not too long. Go ahead. And and those are all the properties. Uh, we're talking about the properties that were, you know, 1977. Anything new after that didn't have a lateral. It just didn't have a lateral. It was a new build. And uh, if if they have to connect, they have to pay. So. Right. Exactly. So it's just the older houses, and I, I think uh, the majority of the older houses and the way that the sewer was designed was to, you know, take uh, in account where the most houses were. And back in the day, a lot of the older houses were close to the road. So, you know, not like now where some of the houses have driveways that are, you know, longer than, you know, than J.E. Hatfield Drive, right? So, or, yeah, thank you. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Are there any other comments or questions? And the motion as it reads now is that, that the municipality is going to bear the cost of uh, bringing the lateral to this person's property at no cost to the, to the property owner, but the property owner will still be responsible for connecting, okay? So if there's no more questions, I'm gonna, as for the question 
All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carry. The next item is an RFD for new server connection again. And this one here is kind of totally different from what, from what we just discussed. This is a connection on John Street and it was beyond it was beyond where the bylaw was going to what was was covered in order to to bring the sewer and the sewer lateral exceeds the standard 150 feet requirement by the bylaws what it is but these people what they did they, they wanted to be connected so they paid to get the the, the lateral to their property they paid they they, they bore the cost of, of doing that. There needed to be an easement or there needs to be an easement now for what they want to do because there's another lot that they want to connect to. And there needs to be an easement which these property owners have, have looked after that, whatever needed to be done to connect. And what, what the suggestion is now is that, that uh, the connection charge, I get a second connection. That that the connection charge of 1211 be waived because they paid for all this themselves. So there won't be any charge for the connection at all. So am I correct in saying that? Uh, CAO Muse. I'm pretty sure that's what yeah. it means here. Yeah, this this one's an old story. And the, the reason why there's an easement is that it is the, the actual lateral is on private property. It is not on TIR land. Exactly. So under normal circumstances, there would not be an easement requirement. We would just work with TIR and off we go. So at years and years ago, there was an, an arrangement where they were able to extend the sewer at a fair cost to themselves and that we would take over operations of that. And so this is another extension to that existing work. Uh, there was a missing easement that didn't fully get done, which will get done under this scenario. They, uh, and, and so, bec and because it's all being done by them, um, and because it's an extension of an existing, the appropriate, well, we, we, we've been dealing with these residents for a bit now, and there's been a back and forth, but at the end of the day, what we thought was the fairest approach was that if they were to bear the cost of the extension, we would waive the sewer connection fee, um, which, which to me is an acknowledgement that they, they are bearing a cost. Now, most people do bear that cost anyway. I won't, I won't that, that's, that's the case, but this is a very unique scenario. And we think that this is the fairest resolution for uh, for the municipality as well as the resident. And they are requesting this, so they've received. We've received a letter confirming that they agree to this arrangement. So the motion that council has in front of them would be consistent with their request, which is to allow it to happen and to and to waive the sewer fee, the capital fee, not the operational fee. Obviously, that they'll pay. Councilor Dachimal. Uh, thank you for explaining that, C.A. Muse, because I was just about ready to, you know, I guess, jump on the bandwagon here. And uh, you know, when originally on John Street, there was four properties uh, and one of the property of the vacant lot, which is, you know, requesting this uh, was part of that. And I think maybe some of the information somewhere was lost. And it's unfortunate because it took uh, quite a bit of time and digging. Uh, to get it, but uh, I'm I'm happy that uh, we can, you know, connect these people to their to their lot, uh, and you know they are you know building another home, uh, a, a home there, and they were that that lot was a part of the original uh, four, if I remember correctly, so it's uh, it's only fair for for us to to uh, waive those fees uh, and let them connect uh, because since since they've uh, you know, bared the costs, uh, four of them. I think there's another one, two, three, three other, or I think three other properties that have, you know, connected and they've had to pay uh, their share, which is, you know, reimburse the original four. Anyway, it's kind of complicated. I know it is. 
but uh, I'm willing to uh, to again make the motion that we uh, uh, the recommend recommended motion. I don't know exactly how it reads, but uh, I think uh, Ward and Muse can maybe read it and I, I'll read clear. the motion the way I I'll read the Thank suggested you. motion. Council is accepting the connection request and allows the resident to connect to the West Pumnico sewer because of the diligent process and establishment of necessary easements. Now, the motion does not include the waiving of the, and maybe it should. Yes. So we can add that, 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 so to that, that, that the connection fee be waived for this property. Okay. So do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Digden. Any discussion or questions? Seeing no hands, call for the question. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. Next one is a nomination of Mariner Center Board. And this was the, the Mariner Center Board of Directors elected Julianne Boudreau to fill a vacancy on the board. But as per the policy, the board must be approved by the municipality. Therefore, the purpose of this memo is to request council approval of Julia Boudreau to the Board of Directors of the Mariner Center. We have someone to move that. Moved by Councillor Sonia, seconded by Deputy Deputy Warden Albright. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. Wedgeboard uh, crosswalk. This was brought to to the attention of uh, our Councillor Boudreau that uh, the crosswalk needed painting. This is something that, that we as a municipality are responsible. For. And what we do is we, we uh, uh, authorize uh, TIR to go and paint it and we, we pay the bill. So a letter has, a letter will be written or has been written to TIR in order to get that painted. So, Councilor Boudreau, you have you, you had your hand up. Yes, I, I'd like to add on to that, uh, Mr. Warden. Uh, they, there's been uh, about a year ago or a year and a half, whatever, uh, they put up new uh, speed limit signs because of the new school. Uh, now, those are erected, uh, you know, before and after the school, where the new school is going to be. Could we get signage on those um, signs that says there's a crosswalk ahead? Um, I, I'm not sure. And I think, I think for, for this motion, we should deal with this and then maybe we'll, because this is kind of outside the motion. Yeah. It's something that we could uh, bring up after we deal with this motion, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure what the uh, protocol yeah. was, but uh, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. that's so, good. So the motion, the motion will be to, to send a letter to TIR to paint yeah. the, the crosswalk and that we will be assuming the, uh, uh, the cost of painting that paying TIR. Yeah. Yeah. We, need a, we need someone to make that motion. Moved by Councillor Boudreau, seconded by Councillor Surrett. Or did you, you, you didn't have a, a comment or you didn't have a question? Okay. So any questions or comments on that? Seeing none, I'll, I'll uh, ask for the question. All in favor signify raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. Now, to your, to your comments there, I don't believe that you can put on the uh, the, the, the school the school zone signs I think are particular to the school zone. I don't believe maybe maybe they can, but what they do is they, they sometimes there's signs that say there's a crosswalk ahead, which yeah. would be probably a different sign than, than, okay. than the school board. But that that would be something I think that that would have to come from TIR. Definitely, okay. it doesn't mean that it's not our responsibility, but I, I yeah. think it would have to be approved by TIR. I do believe. Okay. 
but okay. it's something that could be asked, uh, the question could be asked to them to see if that is a possibility of, of, of something to have there. Because yeah. it's, it, you're on the crosswalk before you see that there's a crosswalk. Exactly. Who's not aware, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Especially coming from the north. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Down south. That's right. Uh, you got a hard time to see the crosswalk, and if there's people on the on the crosswalk, you're you're on them. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something that could be looked into. Council okay. Stray. Uh, it's my opinion, and Gordon, you can correct me on this. That Gordon should. I say Gordon. Someone should make that motion so that uh, for it to move forward. Should am I right there? You can make a motion that 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 be looked into for sure. Yeah, I, I'd like to make that motion. Okay. Yeah. And the, and the, is there a seconder? The the motion. Okay, move uh, seconded by Councilor Dartmoor. And the motion would be that that. Uh, um, I, or either staff or through me or whatever be, uh, a letter be sent to uh, uh, TIR in order to see if something would be done to mark that crosswalk and what yes. the protocol is for them to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So it's moved and seconded. All in favor, signify raising your hand. Contrary minded. Terry. Um, second reading bylaw. Regional Emergency Management. I think we've all seen that. And because this is second reading, we, we had it at, at a, as our first reading. So is there any, any, any questions or do we, we need a motion, I guess, to accept this? It's a municipality of Argyle, the bylaw, uh, for regional emergency management for Remo. Move, move by, move by uh, Deputy Warden, seconded by uh, Councillor Bork. Any questions or comments? Seeing none. I'll ask for the question. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. Um, complaints management policy. This is seven day notice. So which means that it's, can we pass that if it's seven day? No, this is our seven day notice. This would, this would be the, 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 the first, again, the first reading of this. So is this a, a brand new policy that we had? No motion required, just advising council of the policy. Okay, I see, I see a comment there from our, from, from our uh, clerk. So are there any discussion or questions on this? It's basically for your, for your uh, information at this point and for you to look at. Uh, uh, CO News. So the purpose of this policy is it's it's a step one of um, what we are anticipating a, an investment in a complaints software to support uh, incoming complaints and managing them appropriately. We think that there's a lot of value in doing that. The There is an existing software that has been developed locally. And uh, we've had some initial interviews with users as well as the developer on this. So the first step is a policy. So we have intentions of bringing to you a proposition for a complaints management policy, uh, complaints management software that will significantly aid us in tracking things like dangerous and unsightly, et cetera, et cetera. Perhaps not, perhaps not the, uh, the, the um, uh, well, anyway, many, many complaints has that. That's, this is the first step in that process. Yep. Okay. So any, any questions, any, any comments on this? Seeing none, we'll move on. 
So the next one is a flag policy. And, and again, this is a seven day notice. I guess what, what the policy would say is, is how, what, what we would do with the, with the flagpoles. We would, we would have like uh, three, uh, there's the uh, Canadian flag, the Nova Scotia flag, and it could be the Acadian or, or uh, uh, First Nations flag or Acadian flag would be flown, flown from your flagpole. The, the other one is basically if there was uh, uh, organizations or whatever that would request to, 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 to uh, that would request to have their flags flown at our at our office, then it would have to be requested. But it wouldn't it wouldn't be an automatic thing, and they would need uh, they would need the permission from council to do that because we have four flagpoles. But I guess from what I see, is only three of them would be flown at the would would be would be there at the time. There will always be four. There would always be four. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Surratt. Uh, this goes to our CAO. Uh, if I recall right, uh, I thought we had passed the motion, might be 10 years ago now, eight or 10 years ago, that uh, we wouldn't be flying any flags. And uh, so I don't know if that was a policy or not, but I remember at a, one of our council meetings, we had, I, Maybe we had made a motion. I thought we had made a motion, but maybe not. So there was a policy there before, or there was none, uh, CAO. That's all I wanted to know. Well, uh, through you, Warden, there was certainly not a policy, but if there was a motion to that effect, we will investigate. I think what we have to understand at the, that at the time, we didn't actually have a flagpole. So I think part <laughs> of the logic behind that was we can't fly a flag if we don't have a pole. So, uh, so I think that was part of it, but you know, the I warden, the warden is supposed to go like this. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we at the time, Aldrich was the warden, and we didn't want him to hold the flag twenty four seven. So uh, we decided that. But no, it's it's, it's an, that's an interesting point, uh, Councillor Sudet. And what I'll do is I will pull out that motion and the history, because that might in fact be what you would prefer is that you don't want to actually entertain any sort of special request flags, and that's entirely up to council. So things, things that, that so here, here's what I, my understanding of the protocol right now, which is important for us to get right. So first of all, uh, the order that we have it right now, I believe is incorrect and we'll have to fix that. It, in my, my research would say that the Canadian flag is always to the left and then it's the Mi'kmaq grand flag, which represents a, a national sovereign flag. So Canadian protocol would say that you fly Canada first national so sovereign flag second, provincial, municipal, and historical. So our municipal flag is not actually included in this policy. I don't know that it's in tremendous condition to be flown. Uh, and until we get one that's really nice, maybe we would change the policy then. Order it should look, it, sh it should be to the from left to right, Canada, First Nation, Nova Scotia, and Acadian. So on special events, one of those four flags would come down or two would come down periodically to celebrate an event or a people or whatever the case may be. So Remembrance Day, you might, you might fly the Remembrance Day flag. On the Celtic uh, festival, you might, you might fly the Celtic festival flag and you may have you know, um, other flags of interest um, you know, that, that, that will come to your attention. In fact, we had a flag uh, recently that we, we were presented. We didn't fly it because we didn't really have, at the time, didn't have a poll, but it was, um, it was for a transgender um, uh, uh, week or month, I can't recall, forgive me, I can't recall exactly if it was a week or, or the month or um, forgive my ignorance on it. So, so that's the, so those kinds of things, this policy will address. It's like, this is what you do if you want to fly. And sometimes it's no, because there might be conflicting events, right? Um, but but we have four flagpoles now with our new building and and we're trying to set a standard so that we can address this appropriately because we do we will be getting requests. Yes, sure. Uh, if I could, uh, Danny and Nicole, yeah. excuse me, just one quick. If, if there was a motion 
but no policy, do we rescind the motion once you investigate? How does that work usually? Um, or not really? Well, I think, I don't think you necessarily have to rescind that particular motion. You, okay. it's, perhaps, it's perhaps a good idea if you're going to take a different direction to eliminate any sort of lack of clarity around that. So, you know, if it's, if it's your view that that motion was made in a different time because we didn't have flagpoles, then perhaps it's not necessary that you rescind right. the motion. But, but if you, in the absence of, if you want to eliminate all ambiguity, then yeah, you can rescind that motion. Um, and you can rescind it uh, at the at the same meeting that you pass this motion at the a motion of policy, right? So so you, you know your memory is is quite good. I don't recall that particular motion, um, and but I, I think you're right. Now that you think now that you mention it, that there is something there. We'll look at that. We'll present it to council, and the time that you want to make a decision at the next meeting, you'll have all the information you need. Okay, uh, councillor or deputy warden. Thank you. I had no idea there was a, a motion that had been made about the flagpole before, but um, reading through the policy, I, I like the idea of this because I think it promotes inclusivity. And there are organizations who would will request to have their flag flown. And I think as part of um, being municipal government, we, we should embrace all different um, groups. And I think I think it's, it's a great policy and it, there are controls put into place where people have to apply, you know, at a certain amount of time in advance and flags can only fly for a certain amount of time. I really like the way the policy is laid out and, and definitely I, I think it's a great policy. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Dr. Wong. Yeah, if I if I recall back, uh, I don't know how many years it was, but maybe the nine, 10 years ago when we were talking about a flag policy and uh, at the time we didn't have a flagpole. And I think at the time that was kind of our excuse to, you know, hey, you know, we don't have a flagpole, we don't have to fly flags, right? But uh, times have changed and like Councillor Albright, Deputy Albright talks about inclusiveness and all that. Uh, the times have changed and we've got four flagpoles and uh, we'll have people and groups that uh, want to fly their flag and I think you know this policy will will cover that uh, you know of course we won't be flying terrorist group flags or anything like that but it'll be you know groups that are legit and uh, I think it's a, it's a step in the right direction. I, I agree sure. Anybody else? There's no motion we don't need a motion on this again it's a seven day uh, notice so it'll be done probably at our next meeting, which will be at the end of the month. So if there's no other questions or comments, I will continue. The next one, accessibility plan review. That is there so that we can all look at it. They, they've, they've done a lot of work. They've made some recommendations. And what is, requested of, of, of council now is to look at it, see if there's anything that you feel had been missed or should be added, or, or if you don't agree with some of them, it gives a chance to look at that before the next meeting so that at the, the, the uh, committee of the whole, if there's any changes or anything that needs to be added or, or deleted from that, that would be the time to do it. So it's there, it's there for your review, basically just to look at what they've done and see if you agree with everything that, 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 that went on with the committee. I think they've done a lot of fabulous, fabulous work for sure. Uh, Councilor Shrek, you had your hand up. Lucky they didn't take my voice away. <laughs> I'm talking a lot. <laughs> Uh, just a, just a, probably a point, like you said, Warden, Warden Mewis, great, I read the whole thing, very well put together. But I'd like, like, also like to add, uh, not to be controversial, but there's enough in there about sidewalks, and, and, and I could be wrong, I, I, ch I challenge all of the, my fellow councillors, there's a lot there about sidewalks, we do need a sidewalk policy, from what I've seen there. But, but I stand to be correct. It is just what I saw. And it's just a comment. Thank you. Yeah. 
Anybody else? Don't see anybody. So, so I guess what we need from this is to be able to bring this back at the Committee of the Whole to have it approved, changed or whatever, if there's anything that needs to be changed. Am I right? Go ahead, uh, CEO Muse. Well, I think I think uh, Kim uh, would be most appropriate to speak on this. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yes, I um, submitted it to you early so that you had enough time to review all the work that the committee has done. Um, at the end of the month, when you approve it, our next step is we're going to send it to Halifax, the accessibility doctorate, for them to review to make sure that we have everything in place and then it'll be finalized and our goal is to have it completely done September, October. Okay, and again, Kim, excellent work that, that your committee has done for sure. I commend you on, on the work that you did on that. Thank you. So we, we know what we need to do and uh, just to, to, if we're satisfied with it, it'll, it'll be approved the way it's, presented and if there's no if there's no changes if there's any changes that would have to, to come would it have to go back to the committee or is that is that, how would that work if if something needed to be changed does that have to go back to the committee yes so any changes comments any kind of feedback uh, you can send it to myself and Ailey and I'll bring it to the next meeting uh, that we have for the committee okay good enough. yes yep okay. thanks good uh Mariner center resolution it's something that we need to uh we need to to to, to approve um as was mentioned uh, by our deputy warden it's been a lot of work done we're working well together we finally came up with we were able to come up with a uh, 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 funding uh Funding arrangement from all from all three for 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 uh, uh, funding as far as operational and and capital funding uh, percentage wise. Um, it's it's a project that we're all it's a project that I think we're all in favor of. It certainly looks that way, and I think that this uh, resolution covers basically everything that we need to. That we need to to be aware of and 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 commit ourselves to doing. So, are there any questions, Deputy Warden? I just wanted to add that as part of the application, these resolutions have to wow. be passed by each respective council. Um, we're hoping that tomorrow at the steering committee meeting, that all councils will have created their resolutions and will have passed them. Right. because like everybody that. met i think they were supposed to, every every council was was going to meet before our meeting tomorrow before tomorrow and right it was one of the uh, this is one of the uh, criteria that we had to have in order for the uh, 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 application to go as well so so what we need is a motion to approve this uh, resolution Mo okay i see it's moved by councillor threat seconded by deputy warden any other questions or comments? Councillor Dignan. Uh, thank you. Just wondering if we could have a little uh, information piece maybe drawn up that the councillors can put out on their Facebook page or whatever, uh, just explaining to the public about the possible uh, Mariner Centre expansion and uh, the cost, what it may be and how much each municipality is looking at putting in as far as uh, taxes and stuff like that, just that we're all on the same page and that we can get it out there to the people. Because I, I see a part of it here um, about the municipality engaging the public, but I'd just like to engage them before we're too far into it. That's all. And just let them know exactly what is going on. Okay. Thank you. Deputy Warden, you have your hand up. Yep. Tomorrow at our um, steering committee, Deputy, um, the Councillor Digden, we are actually talking about a press release that will be going out um, to the public about the Mariner Center. 
It may not go as deep as what you're talking right now because we're in the phase of the application. We're still not even certain if we're going to be approved by the application. So it's hard to say this is what we're paying because we don't even know if we're getting accepted yet. But there will be kind of a summary of, of the work that's been done and, and the steps that we've taken and, and the successes that we've shown so far. So because we all felt like there hasn't been a whole lot that's gone out to the public so far. And to your point, it, it's time that something gets released. Exactly. You know, and that was one of the comments that was made at the meeting that, that don't, don't try to tell the public at this point that we have money coming because we don't know. So, so you don't want to put, uh, you know, uh, uh, too high hopes unless we know that, that yes, this is, you know, it, it's available for us. So it was recommended, I guess, that, that we be a little careful in how we, how much we can tell the public at this point. We can't tell anything that we don't have yet. Right. So anyway. Because we're just in the application, sorry. We're in the application. We're, we're just in we're the, application the application process. We have no idea if we're, we're moving ahead or not, right? So we, we could be right back to no funding again. And, you know, we don't know, so. That's fair, just like to, to keep exactly. everyone and I, and I can in see. the know, that's all. Because we, we get we get a lot of questions. People realize people realize that there's something going on. Like they know that that we're working on a, on a suspension, and, and uh, I know I've been approached. You know, like okay, so are we getting this or are we not? Well, the only answer I can tell them is we don't know. We're working on it. We're hoping, and we don't know when. We we think it's going to happen at some point, but we just don't know when. And, and at this point, we're just uh, in a process of of uh, uh, applying for money, applying for grants and whatever. So anybody else? So there was, was a motion on the floor to approve the resolution. If there's no more comments, I'm gonna ask for the question. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. The next one is another one from the Mariner Center Steering Committee. And it's a request for discretionary funds. And what was happening is when you're when we're doing this, there's a very, very, very uh, uh, tight deadline for this application. And costs can come up, items can come up that 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 include and, and that it involve uh, uh, financial financial uh, uh, contributions. So one of them came up at the last at the last meeting. And what, what happens is when it, when it gets to that point where, where there, there's a cost factor, it has to go back to council for approval. And every time you do that, you're, you're, you're setting yourself back. So what the recommendation was that there'd be an approved amount to the committee that, that, that if that came up, we could, we could spend up to a certain amount in order to get the process going. And the amount that was, that was uh, given was $100,000 total. I don't believe we're ever gonna spend $100,000 extra for, for, for this, for this. But, but it's best to have enough in there. And, and our portion would be 30,666 because of our uh, uh, funding our funding uh, um, arrangement that we have at 30.66%. It doesn't mean that we would spend that. It means that if something comes up, we wouldn't have to go back. The, the steering committee wouldn't have to go back to, to council in order to have that approved. I believe that, that uh, I believe the town has already approved that so that they wouldn't have to go back. I'm pretty sure the municipality of Yarmouth was doing the same thing because they brought it up as well, that this is something we should have. So this is what the recommendation is, that we, that we pre-approve some money for discretionary uh, 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 spending or, or, or uh, uh, decisions that have to be made that could require the financial uh, aspect to it. So I'm going to ask for, for, for uh, yeah, go ahead, uh, Councillor, or 
Deputy Warden, go ahead. Just to add to what Warden said, so we had previously approved our percentage of 32,500. That yeah. was for EXP to get moving on the application. As we were sitting in the steering committee meeting last week, a, a, an expense came up, um, something that will also help with this application. And it was a small amount. It was like $2,000 potentially for each unit. And because we don't have this discretionary fund, we had to wait and come back to council and ask for approval, which could potentially slow us down. I mean, we, Warden Muse and I knew that you were not going to refuse a $2,000 ask on a $30 million project, but yet we don't have that discretionary fund in order to say yes. Yarmouth had approved it. They were thinking ahead. That was really smart on their part that they've approved their percentage. So what they're, we were asked to, to do was to possibly approve a percentage um, that, that's in a pot so that if little things like this come up, we can make decisions at that meeting rather than having to come back and forth and back and forth and slowing down the project. Cause like Warden, you said, it's a tight deadline and we don't, like we were even afraid that one week was gonna slow things down to a point where it could set us completely back. So we're trying to continue the momentum and by doing this, it's going to help us um, if little things come, like this come up again. That's right. And, and like I said, it, it sounds like a, a, a huge amount. And I think I, I'm, I'm not sure how much the town has put in, but I know it was it was a, a fair amount as well. Uh, but I, I can't see where we're going to be spending one hundred thousand dollars extra mm -hmm. in order to in order to get the application. The one thing that you have to realize as well is if we're gonna if we're gonna do that application, we're gonna send that application, we have to make sure that it's right. And the more information and the more, the more people who know how to do these, if you're gonna spend some money to do it right, it's better than 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 not spend it and and get refused because it wasn't done right. There's not enough information. And, and there are firms out there that know exactly how to do these things. So anyway, that's what had come up, you know, to, to hire a firm to, to, to basically tell our story is what is, is, is the words that were used. And, and that's what, the, that's what the, the, uh, um, the government needs. They need those things in order to, to make the application more, with, give it more strength, I guess. So I guess what we're looking for, yeah, go ahead, uh, Councillor Digden. Uh, I'd be willing to make that motion, the recommended motion that the Mariner Center Expansion Committee through the Mariner Center operations be approved for up to $30,666 of funding from the municipality of District of Argyle relating to work required to apply for funding and other expenses related to advancing the expansion of the facility. Okay, do we have a seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor Sonia. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Did you have something, uh, Councillor Threat? No? Oh, you were voting before I asked for the question. <laughs> okay, all in favor signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carry. Thank you very much. Water supply lending program. As we know, we've had, we've had Quite good success with our with our lending program, and we're almost up to our maximum that we had uh, uh, that we had approved of five hundred thousand. And the request here is to raise the uh, the amount to eight hundred thousand because we, we and that would be to help more people who who are in need. And what's happening is is. There's a lot of people out there that probably would need a well, but they can't even afford the loan, right? I mean, we have to look at that. And and, and in the uh, in the, the 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 recommendation here is that that maybe we could have some kind of a program similar to what we do with the low income uh, tax rebates. That that maybe if 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 someone that would fit in that low income that would be whether it's the same as 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 the uh, tax, but whatever would be established as as uh, qualify for 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 that, maybe they could uh, the, the 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 interest could be lower, or there could be uh, an upfront uh, uh, um, 
uh, interest uh, rebate right away, and, you know, that type of thing. And it's something that maybe would, would help people who may not be able to do it the way it's set up now, but it might give them the opportunity if there was an incentive like that, uh, you know, something to, to help them out. When we changed, we've changed what we're going to do with the uh, uh, delivering of, of uh, um, um, drinking water this year. That was costing us a lot of money. And, and, and the saving could be up to $30,000. And I don't know if that's just ours or if it's the, 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 the provincial as well, but a total. But, but uh, that could be applied towards that as well. We're going to be saving money there. And I think, it, to me, it's not the money that we spend that was wrong. I think it's, it's, it's the abuse. It's, it, it's the abuse that was, that was uh, 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 people abusing the system. And, and we were paying for people that probably we shouldn't have been paying for. Where in this way here, at least the money would go to the people that, that uh, uh, that really need the assistance. So, and and I think the government, I think government should be uh, uh, also approached to see if, if there's anything that they can uh, uh, contribute to this, either through housing, either through whatever. I mean, housing has a program for wells, but if, it, if it's not, if your well isn't dry, I mean, I've had some people cry, and if the well wasn't dry at that time, didn't mean they weren't going to get a well. They were going to be put on a waiting list. Well, these people needed a well today. We don't know if we're going to have a, a, a drought this summer, but there's a there's a good chance that we might. It seems to be getting more and more uh, to that to that effect that we're you know we're we're going to be faced with this more and more often. So anyway, that that's what I have here. And uh, there are two motions. The motions that, that we're looking for would be to move that council approve an increase from 800, uh, to 800 from the 500, and also approve the motion uh, to move that CAO amend the water lending policy to include the enhanced funding model and bring the modification count for, for final approval. So are there any, are there any discussion on this, on this uh, uh, item here? So, Mr. Chair, we only need the motion. We only need the motion on the 800k. Uh, you have already authorized us to change the policy. We just have not arrived at that modification yet. Okay. So, okay. in the interests of uh, you know, things are happening fast, and yes. the need for water lending increase uh, was faster than our ability to change the policy. Okay. So that's why we need that motion. Okay. To. to uh, allow that to continue. So are there any questions or discussion on this on this policy? I'd like to make the motion. You make the motion that we increase the uh, to 800,000. 800, Seconded by Council Board. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in, oh, go ahead, uh, Councilor Digden. Uh, thank you. Well, just looking at some numbers compared to last year, I just uh, totaled them up here kind of quick. March, April, May of 2020 and March, April, May of 2021. Right now we are 50.81 millimeters short of what we were this time last year. And that according to uh, one of our uh, staff, actually one of our last or CAO staff that has a weather station down here in Middle West Pubnico. Alex has a, a station, keeps pretty good, pretty good uh, records. So that's what I just added up quick there. And just wondering that uh, by going ahead with this 800,000, is it going to um, hurt us anywhere down the line as far as doing pro other projects or something that we may want to do in the municipality? That's all. Sorry that about something. the cat meowing at the door. If you hear it. Yeah, that would be something CAO could could answer. Uh, well, we uh, we don't anticipate that that will have any sort of long term impact on on projects that we have underway. We 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 do have reserves in play, and we don't anticipate that uh, we'll require that 
that fund uh, immediately. If we needed to get that fund immediately, we do have options to borrow. Uh, but I see that as extraordinarily unlikely based on our current situation. So um, we will still be charging an interest. Uh, what the amount is, is still to be determined. We currently are at 3.5. 3. Uh, so we could potentially decrease that interest to pass on some savings to the, to the resident. The other way to alleviate cost is to extend the lending. So right now we're max at 10 years, we could potentially make that change as well. So those things, both of those things will have a negative impact on our cash flow. But even if we did those things, I still I'd be confident that that uh, from a cash flow perspective, we're, we're okay. Keeping in mind that the loans that are being paid, you know, it's one tenth every every year that goes by, one tenth is being received plus interest. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and thank you for the answer. And, and I don't know if we're going to look at uh, decreasing the interest rate anywhere along the line. I just feel as though uh, if we did, it would be unfair to the people that's already in the program there now and that's paid the three point five all along. So. I, I kind of like the, the three point five seems to be a, a fair, a fair uh, rate interest rate compared to what they'd have to pay if they went to a financial institution institution looking for money. Thank you, thank you for the answer. And, and plus, they wouldn't get the ten years to pay either. I don't think that's another thing. So, any other questions on the motion? If there's no other comments or question, all in favor signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. So that brings us to a correspondence. Department of Justice letter. And that was to Chris. And this was this was a letter that was sent by, it was a recommendation through the the uh, um, the meetings that we're having with with the mayors and and uh, um, and CAOs across uh, the tri counties that that uh, make sure that with the uh, fisheries coming up that to make sure that that there was a there was some 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 uh, uh, RCMP presence and make make sure that say you know to make sure of safety of everybody and that was just a, a reply by uh, Randy DeLore, the Minister of Justice from Nova Scotia, that they are certainly aware that it needs to be, it, it's top priority for them, the safety. What, what that means, I'm not sure, because we, we the, the question was more whether or not there was gonna be extra, extra uh, uh, presence, which is a cost factor, of course, and, and whether they were willing to, to to make sure that that was going to happen. Um, the next one. Oh, okay. This is a memorandum of understanding between the alcohol, gaming, fuel, and tobacco division. And I see that that's already been been signed by our our CAO by our municipality. So. And response letter from MLA Colt Mablong. And again, that was uh, a letter that he sent a letter in my, to my name. And, and that was just a thank you to involve him or, or include him in the, um, in the letter that we had sent. And that was for the 988 mental health crisis line. We had sent a letter of, uh, uh, I guess it was just uh, not approval, but, but a letter of, of, of uh, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Support. support. Yeah, I read your lips. <laughs> a letter of support for this. So anyway, and that was uh, Colton just saying, you know, what, what he's been doing as well. So, okay. Financial request. We have one financial request. District community grant request of $500 from the, the Village Historic Acadia de la Nouvelle Ecosse. And that I would take it would be Councillor Dachemont. So you That's been... correct. And uh, thank you, Warren Muth. Uh, I uh, 
I got them to, I wasn't really thinking, I got them to fax it to, uh, to the office and not thinking that maybe there was nobody at the office. I should have got an email where I would have got a copy. So uh, I think CA Muse has a copy in his hand. So it's a request, I do believe for $500 from the village uh, for uh, accessibility. Uh, what is it exactly CA Muse? Um, it doesn't say an amount. I presume it's for 500, but it doesn't say yeah. it's too, um, uh, uh, it is for improvements to allow for an outdoor experience, um, adaptation for COVID in cases, uh, for, uh, lands around the center so that the, the, those that are, uh, less able can, can participate, uh, through, you know, improvements to land, like paver stones, gravel, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I'd like to make that a motion. Seconder. Seconded by Councillor Bork. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Contrary minded, carried. Thank you, CA. Brings, brings us to agenda topics for next meeting or notice of motion by Councillor. Seeing none, question period. Any questions? Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh. It can it can be in the same. So I just I wanted to advise council that there will be some uh, information coming out regarding um, the the status update of of the mosquito nuisance issue that we have in certain communities. Um, updating residents on the work we've done with the province to this point, where we're at, and, and where we still need to go. Uh, around that. So I just wanted to make council aware that I know that that Warden Muse, uh, we, you and I have been uh, looking at some correspondence communication. It's going to be joint communication between MLA LeBlanc and ourselves, um, just because he's been instrumental in dealing with the province. So um, anyway, I just want to make sure that council was aware that that will come out. Um, we did talk about sending mail outs as well. Uh, because the the issue is is particularly uh, hitting like the Plymouth slash uh, District Four, like you know, from Morris Island to Emeralds Hill, Hubbard's Point. So, so in those areas in particular that have been uh, most hard hit these days. So, and Abram, and Abrams River. <laughs> well, Abrams River is the birthplace of mosquitoes. We yeah, we, uh, we, we plan it's, on it's a his, we're it's a historical. The, sorry, we're going to open the cages probably next month. You're going to open the cage is perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so we can't actually do anything about the mosquitoes in Abrams River because it's a historical, it's been there for so long that we have to apply. Right. Anyhow, it's not funny because it's such a nuisance for many people. I, I live in it too, so I understand. It's, it's, it's uh, unfortunately uh, the downside of living uh, in a marshy rural area, but um, but there is there are some things that we have uh, accomplished. Uh, I mean, the short short story is is that the municipality cannot solve this problem on its own. Um, we require provincial intervention on this, like any sort of act. You know, I mean, we can make recommendations on like putting you know more bird houses or bat houses on people's properties. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are fairly familiar with with some of that, and and I don't I don't. It's it's hard to communicate that without sounding pretentious. Um, you know, we don't want to be in a situation where you know, we're just we're just looking to help in the best way possible, but but we can't actually, you know, alter the the ecosystem of of regions uh, without any sort of provincial blessing or even finances. So, but you know, we can continue to provide some communication. Unfortunately, it's one of those climate change things that that could 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 be okay this year randomly, or it could be worse. Um, so I just want to advise council that there will be some information being shared. Uh, CEO Muse uh, just wants so the residents will know. We have a little boot on the Indian Sluice Bridge with some uh, off in the boot when they come on the island. I'm trying to beat the warden Muse's Abram River. We're bad too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so some people have tr tried to solve their own problem on their own property, but then when they go for walks, they can't control what's going to happen in somebody else's property. So it's 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 an issue. It does impact the 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 enjoyment of people's uh, homes, and and you know it used to be maybe for three weeks, you know, black flies come in and they go, no seams come and they go, but now it seems to be longer. It's it's a it's a longer nuisance. 
So um, running into the questions, we didn't have a lot of questions, but we had a lot of love share for Councillor Gee, including uh, Patsy Sudet Photos, um, who, who seems to be hitting on you, uh, saying that you look great and it's nice to see you. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to tell uh, somebody about that. And, and she wondered about that nurse that was coming behind you. She wanted to know who that was, too. <laughs> yeah, th that that's right. It's it's complicated, you know. So, um, uh, so there really hasn't been um, there. There have been some like commentary around some of your discussion, but I think it's it's mostly uh, mostly gee fan mail. There you go. <laughs> okay. I think they're mostly family, though. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> How many times did Patsy post? <laughs> 18, uh, hang on, 19 times, 19. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're, we're in public here. <laughs> you, you okay, guys, we can laugh in public. <laughs> you guys are all bad. God bless, I haven't seen her for eight days. Man, it's hard. Uh, whoa, watch what I say there. <laughs> yeah. Gordon, did you have your hand up? Unmute. Uh, yeah, uh, I just I just did. You just uh, did. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, about what we were talking before the meeting started that that uh, those prepaid water cards uh, should we put that on the next uh, meeting's agenda? Because I, I mean it's it's just around the, the drought is just around the corner. I don't. That's an operational decision. We just have to look at. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, that that doesn't require council approval. I mean, it's nice okay. that it raises it for sure. Yeah. But that's an operational issue that we'll just we'll just we'll we'll reach out directly to our fire uh, okay. fire chiefs to see what they need. Yeah, I wasn't sure about the uh, protocol. No, there. that no problem. Just yeah. you know, worse wor you know, there's you can always ask. Yeah, right? thank you. Yeah, welcome. So there's nothing else. We have an in the camera session, and I guess what we need is a motion to go in camera. Moved by Councillor Bork and seconded by Councillor Threat. So we'll move in camera. <laughs>